So, yeah, so summarizing the Afrotropical and Palartic diversity of darkened weetles in one session is not an easy task. <laughs> Uh, as you can see here in this table, those are the two of the most diverse uh, biogeographical uh, realms in the world, uh, at least in terms of the generic diversity. By the way, I have uh, stolen this uh, data from Pat Bouchard and his co-authors. Uh, they recently prepared a catalog of all the generic names uh, of Tenebronide, and I think this paper will be published soon, so uh, keep an eye out uh, for this. And uh, when you're investigating Palartic and Afrotropical uh, darkening beetles, there uh, I listed some of the most of the useful uh, literature. So there's a update for a, color, a catalog of the Palartic Coloptera. There's a volume on Tenebronida published last year, so you can use that to at least have a, a list of the species. In terms of uh, Afrotropical diversity, those two books are uh, really amazing, especially the monograph of the Tenebronida of South Africa because uh, in this uh, publication you can uh, find also keys to some uh, tribes of Kimarine and uh, also to higher lineages within Tenebronida. This is a really well illustrated uh, book so you can kind of use that as a you know like an update to uh, the knowledge gained during this uh, workshop even if you will not be working on Afrotropical uh, fauna, because we had some problems with, for example, Pseudopleuron, Epipleura, so you can find many useful things uh, in this publication, so I strongly recommend uh, you to just, uh, you know, checking it out at least. I could talk about different concepts of the biogeographic regions of the world and how to separate them, but I'm more like a darting beetle myself and I do not see any coarse delimination lines between those uh, regions here. So here I have presented some of the most interesting, I think, uh, distributional patterns among Tenebronida. And as you can see, those groups are a bit naughty and they do not obey the biogeographic classifications. Nevertheless, some of the members of those groups are quite uh, characteristic uh, for uh, particular uh, regions. Kojin just told us about the Pycnoterini, which is uh, a group of uh, really large uh, and uh, peculiar uh, beetles uh, that you can find in uh, tropical Africa. However, when you uh, have a, a deeper look at that than the tribal level, you instantly notice that some of the biogeographic divisions of the world are kind of like starting to make sense. For example, let's have a look at the Tadinina here. So. At the subtribal level, you can see that this uh, subtribe is present in Palearctic, uh, Oriental region, and in Afrotropics. However, if you look at the generic level, you can see that uh, none of the known genera span over multiple uh, biogeographic regions, maybe except for a few species. But this is uh, pretty pretty nice, I guess, and pretty in line with the uh, division shown uh, here. What is uh, cute here, I like this very much. Take a look at Platinotina here, the middle map. There is a one uh, winged species from that lineage of uh, Platinotina that is trying to make its way to the uh, Palearctic by using the Nile River Valley. And on the other hand, on the other side of the continent, there are two winged species also um, making their way to the coastal areas, uh, I guess, here. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. But in general, this is a nice example of uh, Afrotropical uh, Tenebronid lineage. Yesterday, Aaron uh, told us uh, a little bit about uh, Acidini. So we know that uh, there are some speci specific elements uh, that can be of this group that can be found, for example, in Palartic region, like Acida. There is a Stenomorpha in North America, even I saw that. <laughs> and in South America, we have Cardogenus. And nevertheless, there are quite a few species and genera endemic to Afrotropical region. Uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, Madagascar possesses its own fauna, which doesn't overlap with the uh, African uh, continent. Uh, so uh, due to this mystic appearance of those species here, you can see that they're really diverse in forms and uh, they're pretty uh, enigmatic. On the internet, on different uh, websites, on uh, forums, on Facebook, you can find uh, many ID requests for uh, Afrotropical Acidini. Nevertheless, uh, this is a group that is uh, rarely being collected. 
besides a few species and many of the known species are known only from uh, type, uh, type, type series. Uh, and here is a phylogeny of the group, which is uh, which has some really nice uh, or maybe not or problematic biogeographic uh, consequences. As you can see, the South African uh, taxa are sister to Malagasy taxa, which is pretty cool. But this clade is sister to North American acidini. Uh, someone will have to <laughs> explain that to me <laughs> later, because the support of that tree is, is really high. So this is pretty mm, interesting and uh, pretty cool. For investigation. So another very characteristic uh, element of Afrotropical fauna are the genera Stips and Lepidophora. Those are highly psamophilous beetles uh, belonging to the Pan-African tribe Adelstamini, uh, of which only a few elements reach to southern Spain and in general the Mediterranean uh, area. As presented here, some of the species can cover themselves up with uh, sand or surrounding debris. And uh, it is good to know that one of our colleagues, uh, Lubos Puhar, is working on taxonomy of this group. Therefore, if you have any cool uh, beetles representing Adelastamini, you can just reach out to Lubos and uh, I think he will be really glad to help you, help you out. Oh, and I think this is a maybe mistake. What is this Lucanid beetle uh, doing here in my presentation? <laughs> of course, I'm just joking. Uh, this is a, a darkening beetle. This is very characteristic species that we have uh, observed near the South African and Namibia border a few years ago. What is pretty interesting about this creature is the fact that this, uh, it is closely related to uh, the genus Pimelia, so an iconic darkening beetle genus from the Palartic region. Paloma will be talking about uh, that group in a few minutes. Nevertheless, uh, Calognatus or Calognatus is endemic to uh, southern uh, Africa. So this is kind of like a very good species there. Another, in my opinion, iconic group of uh, darkening beetles in uh, South Africa is the tribe Sepidini. They are informally known as uh, Tok Tok beetles, mainly uh, because many species of the Subtribe Moldarina display this interesting behavior, uh, the talking behavior, which is uh, believed to be a form of uh, sexual communication. Uh, as you can see, those are quite big, so they are uh, often collected by different people uh, working in, in the area. And they are, you can spot them, uh, so they are really easy to, to collect. Nevertheless, uh, the group contains over 1,000 species, and species identifications are really challenging, especially when uh, we are talking about the most diverse genera. So, some modes with, uh, with 170 species, uh, Ochnodes with nearly 150 species, and Somaticus also almost 150 species. This uh, unfortunate state of things here, so the uh, bad taxonomic state of this group. Uh, uh, it, Olivia is trying to uh, challenge, uh, to change this unfortunate uh, state and by studying the phylogenetic and taxonomy of this group. If you are interested, uh, you can check out her newest paper on the phylogeny of that group. Uh, it's really, uh, really interesting. A few slides ago, I showed you that Platinotina uh, species can be found in different parts of uh, the whole world. So we have some uh, taxa that are present in the US, uh, in South America, uh, and also in the Oriental region, but there are some uh, really characteristic genera that can be only found in Southern Africa, and those are the Erinotus, uh, Gonopus, and Anomalipus. Those are really large uh, genera, and they are often being collected by uh, many people. Uh, working on even different groups. Uh, fortunately, there are some uh, resources that you can use to identify uh, as even species within those groups. So this might be pretty fun, especially within the genus Anomalipus. Those are really, really large uh, uh, species, uh, up to five centimeters, I guess, and really massive. Uh, and this uh, key is really well illustrated, so we can uh, just give it a shot. Another uh, commonly collected uh, darkening beetle group in southern Africa is the Opatrinoid tribe Stizopina. Uh, many species of this group are constantly being described every year. There is a blind uh, species uh, living in dunes there in the genus Centephalus. However, in my opinion, the most, uh, um, the most iconic species of this group is the Parastizopus armaticeps, which takes care of its larvae. So this is pretty uncommon for dar darkening beetles. So the adults uh, 
dig burrows uh, in the soil and later collect food from uh, the surrounding area to feed the larvae. So this is pretty interesting. There were uh, quite a few papers published, uh, published by Anne Rasa on this uh, behavior. So uh, you can also check them out. And also there is a, um, a series of papers uh, published by Sven uh, Geiselhardt about the chemistry of the defensive secretion within this group and even uh, some uh, phylogenetic implications of differences between the secretions uh, of different species. So this is also really interesting and I think interesting and I think uh, we can kind of like, uh, it, it would be cool to have the same analysis, you know, like on wider scale. So uh, on a scale of, for example, Tenebrionina. Another group, which is partly, at least partly characteristic for Afrotropics is the tribe Amarigmini. And this is a uh, South African genus uh, Psorodes. And there is this uh, genus Psorodes tuberculata, which is a poster beetle for the upcoming International Tenebrionida Symposium, reminding us that the symposium starts on Friday and uh, that, oh, sorry, <laughs> and that you can uh, still uh, register uh, for that. Just go to uh, tenebrionida.org. To get us out of the South Africa, let's stop at Madagascar. So I already mentioned that uh, within Asidini, there is the whole lineage uh, of specific genera uh, which inhabit Madagascar. And this same can be said for many different uh, lineages within darkling beetles, especially the flightless uh, lineages. So for example, Platinotini and Sepidini. There is a, a checklist of species uh, uh, of uh, darkling beetles of Madagascar. So if you are interested in that, you can uh, check this out. And there are some uh, good uh, monographs uh, which allows uh, you to identify uh, species within Platinotina uh, of Madagascar. And I certainly recommend uh, that as well. Now we can have a look at the random drawer, I guess from uh, one of uh, my colleagues sent me that this from the Museum of Hamburg. And this is uh, mostly uh, Afrotropical material and we can uh, verify, you know, uh, if we can see any of the groups that I was uh, telling you about. So for example, have a look at those flat and dirty forms. Those are the Adelostamini. Uh, the next uh, larger forms, th those are Sepidini. So you can see there are quite, at least quite a, a few specimens within this diversity. And uh, lastly, we have uh, the uh, Anomalipus and Gonopus. So the Gonopus are, I don't know if you see, can see my cursor, but the uh, two, the pair in, in the top, this is uh, Gonopus. And those large species uh, here in the middle row, those are uh, Anomalipus. So that kind of works. To really uh, get us out of the Afrotropics, let's, uh, you know, have a closer look at the group, which kind of like breaks the this barrier between those uh, between the Western Palearctic and Afrotropical uh, realm. So the first species that I have ever collected uh, in South Africa was a representative of a uh, genus Zadenos and in South Africa, yes. And uh, during my first trip in Spain, I have collected uh, Heliopathes. So this kind of like shows that those two groups are pretty uh, common within uh, both of those uh, biogeographic uh, regions. However, different genera are uh, present in Palearctic and in Afrotropics. Another uh, group which is shared between the Afrotropics and Western Palearctic is uh, Adesmini. So within the um, Southern, uh, Southern African fauna, you can find such iconic uh, beetle genera as uh, Onemacris, Stenocara, and uh, Epiphyza. And let's go back for a second to our drawer. So here you can you can see Epiphyza and some other uh, other me. And now let's talk about the Western Palearctic with Paloma. Du, du, du. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 <laughs> Within the Palearctic region, the only representative of Adesmini, or the tribe of Adesmini, is the genus Adesmia, with 119 species and five subgenera: Macradesmia, Oterostelis, Posterostelopsis, Adesmia, and also Adesmina. A few years ago, we focused our attention in the Catali Desert, where we found two species. Adesmia caliensis and the most widespread species is um, Adesmia cancellata. And we conduct um, 
uh, study of the patterns of genetic variability in order to understand the diversification success of this species throughout the Qatari desert. And also we uh, conduct a tentative uh, first uh, phylogenetic approach only including a few species. But we recover that the two species belong to divergent lineage, uh, well, all of them with uh, North African species. And these topological patterns represent an interesting biographic scenario with a parallel colonization across the Sahara Desert through the Arabian Peninsula. And also our first, first phylogenetic approach um, um, justify the necessity to, um, to conduct a deep systematic and phylogenetic uh, revision of the trial as many. And this is some of the dark invites that we found together with uh, Adesmia, well, Adesmia cancellata and Adesmia caliensis in Qatar. But now we have a uh, break with the tribe that I love, the tribe Pimelini. This tribe includes 64 genera with 749 species and is distributed uh, throughout the Palearctic and also North, North Afrotropical region characterized by a medium to large size, a compact body, uh, the head and the protoras narrower word than the ultra, and a square cordiformentum, but also uh, with an open procoxal cavities and exposed abdominal membranes. And these characters are really strange with uh, in Pimelinae, Pimelinae, as Aaron told you yesterday. And my favorite genus within the tribe Melini is the genus Pimelia, is the most diverse genus with three, 324 species and present a diverse array of size, um, a huge variability in elytra morphology, different nocturnal or diurnal habitats and occupy different habitats. Um, Arid and semi arid zones and coastal areas is the more common, but also dry forests, and you could find some species in high mountains. Um, recently, uh, we, we conduct a revision of these genus, and in this taxonomic arrangement, we split the genus Pimelia in 14 subgenera, describing six new subgenera. Iberomelia, Italomelia, Blicteraca, Hispanomelia, Magremelia, and Masadramelia. And also, uh, our results recover a recurrent um, morphological uh, pattern uh, within divergent lineage. And we continue a study within the different genera, mainly focusing the Iberian Peninsula and Morocco. And yes, we recover these recurrent morphological patterns in divergent species, like this example. On the left is Pimelia rotundipenis from Amblipteranca. On the right is Pimelia tristis from Amblyptera. And fortunately, we found when we are, when we are fairly under the loop, we found difference in the margins of the pronotum in maize and the presence of a tofu blister in the third, four, and five antenomerals. Um, sometimes in the first two esternites with a triangular structure, but without work like this of Koch or Antoine and the molecular tools, I think that I really, really lost because this is my, it was my first phylogenetic uh, approach within Pimelia at the beginning of my PhD. And um, when, when I found this relationship between these two species with a uh, different, totally different uh, elytra, but at the same time, I have a lot of a bibliography focused only on the elytra and describing the species and grouping together the species uh, 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 only by the elytra. Ah, ah. And I, I smile and say, what? But I continue here working on Pimelia. And also, together with the recurrent morphological patterns, uh, we found also a, a great intraspecific, intraspecific variability, as in this example of Pimelia rotundata. When we are studying if this is related or not uh, with the altitudes. And now I try to find within the Iberian endemic uh, subgenera Iberomelia and Hispanomelia. 
uh, the keys and epomorphies or uh, of the main characters. And I'm, I'm studying the female terminalia. <laughs> And this area, the Iberian Peninsula, together with the Morocco, with Morocco, constitute a hot spot of biodiversity and the past refugee of different dark beetles. And there is a lot of uh, endemism. When on the Iberian Peninsula, we found these eight subfamilies, and and also we are around 500 uh, species of dark beetles. Um, and in France, it's 200 species. And it's not all about female inae. We focus our attention also in Estinokinae. And in these three genus, Misulampus, with five species, five, uh, six species, five of them endemic of the Iberian Peninsula, one of them distributed around Morocco, Algeria, and also reaching the Balearic Island. Thibo Piestes, with a restricted distribution to the Atlantic region of Morocco. And Colometopus with two species, Colometopus clipeatus in the half north of the Iberian Peninsula with a widespread distribution. And the other species, Colometopus cobosi, only described with a small population of the southeast of the peninsula. And previously, Misolampus and Tibopiestres were grouped together in Misolampini, then Misolampini was synonymized uh, with Colometopini, and after different chains, but told you yesterday that finally, uh, Stenokinae um, have only three tribes, Nodalonini, Stenokini, and Talanini, and these three genus uh, currently belongs to Nodalonini. So we conduct a phylogenetic approach to understand the phylogenetic relationship with these three genus. And we recover as a diverse lineage, a basal divergent lineage, uh, uh, only including Misolampus, and another lineage, including Colomotopus and Thibopiesta, and we are working on on that. But also we work with Misolampus. Last year we published a catalog with uh, trying to define the distribution of the different species of Misolampus. And now I just finished, finished, finished uh, a biographic study about Misolampus, trying to, um, to dig in the, in the, the geographic and ecological process within Misolampus. Ah, yes, there remains a few amounts to do, but we will still be working on, on that. Question. <laughs> well, thank you, Marcin and Paloma, for introducing those two regions. Yeah, lots of lots and lots of cool forms out there. Um, if you have any questions on IDs and stuff, maybe we can help them help you with IDs in, a, in one of the freeform sessions this afternoon. Um, next, Andrew, you wanna go next? So yeah, Andrew's gonna introduce the Neotropical Tenebrionidae and incomplete yeah. overview. Yeah, so uh, Koja and I said, sure, we can talk about um, Central and South America, and then last night realized we didn't know a lot about Central and South America. Um, and uh, hopefully if we get to do another iteration of this workshop, we'll be able to recruit some of our uh, great colleagues from those areas. Um, and so, you know, one thing, of course, that we should talk about is, you know, biogeographic versus political borders, right? So the neotropical region, um, as we've been talking about here from this recent ca um, generic catalog of the world, there's some 430 genera from the neotropical region, but really that includes what we would maybe call Central America um, and even up into parts of uh, you know, the United States and in Florida, parts of the Baja uh, California Peninsula, um, and even some of the coastal um, areas that touch up to just the southern tip of Texas in the United States. And then the West Indies are their own thing that are often treated um, separately as well. So we, we listed some of these uh, resources before. Um, for Chile, there's, there's a great book um, that talks about the fauna there, and it has images um, and a lot of information, even images of, of larvae for a lot of these groups. Um, of course, the, the catalog that we've talked about for North America um, you know, does go down through Panama and includes uh, the West Indies as well. So that's great. Um, as far as a species level treatment for Central America, uh, Biologia Centrali Americana, we mentioned that 
that Champion authored those um, those volumes and, and those are kind of the best resource that still exists for that region. Um, and then as you actually get into kind of South America proper, uh, really we have the uh, Black Welders uh, checklist or, or catalog, um, which is also available online. Uh, but then after that, we're really looking at piecemeal uh, uh, revisions and, and publications uh, for that region. Um, and so, yeah, kind of neotropical kind of all talks about a lot of this, but, but variously we've talked about some of the, the kind of Central American stuff throughout this workshop. Uh, but it's also important to keep in mind that uh, South America is a very large continent with very diverse habitat types, right? There's kind of this tropical wet area that tends to be more Northern that really extends up into um, what we might call Central America. And we see a lot of similar uh, fauna there and a lot of the tribes and genera that we've been talking about that extend up that way. Um, there's also kind of a dry temperate area that, that merges into a, a, you know, lots of arid regions uh, as well in the, the southern portion of the continent. And so there's some really neat biogeographical connections uh, for, for some of these South American regions. Um, First, we have uh, kind of arid South American habitats to the Palearctic. And so we have this tribe, Elenophorini. Um, and there, I think there are only two genera in the tribe, but there's Megalenophorus from South America uh, versus several, uh, actually, I think there are a few genera um, in the Palearctic, these kind of weird elongate beetles. Um, and we're really interested to see if these are actually monophyletic, but again, these are the only places that they occur in the world. Um, we also have the uh, tribe uh, Sino Cryptosyne, uh, which is found in the Atacama Desert and, and Southern Africa. So uh, there's some neat connections that go that way. We also see connections, well, we just talked about um, uh, how this relates over to um, kind of the Afrotropical region, but also again, North America, this, this tribe Acidine uh, that we heard about in the Pamelines yesterday. We have the, the North American fauna and this um, South American fauna that are restricted, their flightless tax are restricted to these deserts. So that's kind of neat. How did they get there um, historically? What's kind of the evolutionary story that explains um, these beetles uh, distribution? Uh, again, we still have other connections from kind of South America to North America in these deserts. Uh, so the genus Nyctorhinus is South American. It's currently placed in the Amphidorhini, right, where Eliotes and its relatives are in North America. Um, but it's actually not at all related to Eliotes, but it is related to some other North American things like um, Argoporus and, and Zophobus. There also are a number of other uh, South American, there's, there's another tribe uh, that it's closely related to there. But again, we see this kind of new world distribution um, and links from the arid regions of, of North America, the Neartic realm to the neotropical Southern uh, realm. Uh, we also, of course, um, kind of see this Gondwanan um, Australia to South America uh, uh, connection. And there are two tribes. We just heard about the Deliaini uh, today, these weird uh, Lagrines that uh, have defensive glands in different part of their body that Kojin talked about. Um, but we do have, uh, there are genera from, from um, South America and then most of the diversity is in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we also have, uh, there's a tribe that we haven't talked about of Tenebrio nines, uh, Titanines, Titanini, uh, which again show this same um, Southern distribution. Um, so then just some of these groups that are kind of restricted and, and I guess endemic to neotropical habitats. So we've kind of talked about these kind of tropical music, humid habitats um, that do extend right into Central America and kind of touch up towards the US. We've talked about Nelio 90, that's, that's made an appearance in, in quite a few of our talks so far. Uh, this, this subfamily to tribe that, that probably be belongs in diaporines, uh, but that is restricted to the neotropics. Uh, Talonini, there is a species that touches into Texas, uh, very southern Texas, but this is restricted to the neotropical realm, um, a Stenokiine tribe, single genus, and the Phrenopatini that uh, Pat talked to us about yesterday. Again, this tribe is restricted to 
the neotropics. So there, there are three tribes um, there. We also heard about the Zystropodina that Kojin talked about in his alkaline talk, uh, the comb clawed beetle. And again, this is restricted to neotropical uh, habitats that just barely touches into some of the Southern United States. Um, and one tribe that we haven't mentioned uh, is the Falso Micturini. Uh, these have never been uh, recorded in the literature from, um, from North America, uh, but we do have records from Panama through Costa Rica, probably of undescribed things. This is from Panama, but uh, this tribe is restricted to two genera from um, currently published from South America. Um, and uh, I think you would be forgiven if you kind of thought that was a McTarid at, at first glance. They're these neat kind of sickle-like mandibles um, and some, some pits under their mentum, pretty cool things. Um, okay, so then if we look a little bit further south, within the uh, South American deserts, we have a number of, there are, there are a number of tribes that are only uh, found there. So the first within Tenebrio 90, we have the Scotobiines. I think there are, are six or eight uh, genera in the tribe. And uh, again, things uh, that are really cool. They have placoid sensili on their antennae. Uh, uh, these uh, diastoleus are just really cool with that pronotum that kind of wraps around uh, to completely cover the head that we see kind of convergently in a number of other tenebrionid groups, um, especially in things that are well adapted to desert settings. Um, so a cool group of chemically defended tenebrionine beetles. Uh, but then we also have some pomeliine groups, right? Uh, such as the Nicteliini. Um, this tribe is, uh, is fairly large and it's restricted to South America. Some really, really cool forms um, and, and wonderful coloration, uh, largely restricted again to the desert regions of, of South America. Um, we also have the preo signs and uh, over on the right here, you know, this certainly looks a lot like our Coney on times that we have in the United States. Um, but again, this is a, a similar um, um, story of just a tribe that's uh, restricted to uh, South America. And we also have the uh, Fizo gasterini. Uh, so this is again, another desert dwelling tribe uh, that lives only in the uh, South American deserts. Um, and we heard a little bit about these um, from Aaron's phylogeny yesterday within the Pomeliaini, the Thinobatines and Evaniosomines, um, and then a number of other things that have been previously included in the Edrotiny, which is a, the large tribe from, from North America. And these all seem to form uh, a clade of, of South American uh, Pomeliaines that are restricted just to those desert regions. Um, so that's just a very quick walkthrough of just some of these groups that are restricted uh, uh, here to, to South America. And uh, that's what we have for that region. And I think uh, we have another one from uh, Pat Bouchard coming up. Hello again, just getting uh, set up here. Okay. So thanks for those um, previous presentations, pretty interesting. I'm going to go through two more biogeographic realms, Australasia and the um, Indo-Malayan regions. And I'm using the same table that uh, Martin used earlier, just to show that um, in parentheses here is the rank in terms of generic diversity in the different, the seven um, biogeographic realms. And you can see that the Indo-Malayan realm is third overall after the ecotropical and Paleoctic realms, and Australia fifth in terms of overall diversity. And we've seen this um, breakdown of regions, uh, realms already. And I zoomed in on 
the uh, borders, I guess, of those realms in the north here with uh, the Paleoarctic and in the south here between the Indomalayan and Australasian and uh, separation between Lombok and Bali here and Borneo and Sulawesi. And one of the reasons why this is a cool uh, way to look at uh, uh, the diversity is because each of these realms are subdivided into um, ecosystems. And I put a blue star between each of the ecosystems that are present in these two realms. And actually these two realms cover most of, of the uh, ecosystems, just not boreal forest and taiga, but all the other ones are um, um, included in here, uh, including the tundra. Some of the islands south of New Zealand include some of those um, ecosystems. And on the left in the table here, I just wanted to break it down by group. So we have the 11 subfamilies on the left, and we have the two realms. And if you look at the Indo Malayan realm, um, so the greatest diversity is in the Spinochians. And um, if you compare that with um, the Australasian realm, the greatest diversity is in Tenebrionines and Lagrionines. And if you look at the Dinellionines, which are really diverse elsewhere, they're not diverse at all in these areas, even if Australia is covered by a lot of arid ecosystems, and we'll hear a bit about that next. So Eric Matthews in 2000, he looked at the um, origin of the fauna of Tinubrianus in Australia, more specifically. And so he thought that there were three different origins for the fauna that's in Australia today. And one of them, which he called the Tethian element, uh, is mostly Pinellians that were found around the Tethys Sea a long time ago. And those um, elements are in Australia now, and they're mostly uh, older elements in his um, classification scheme. And they are Pinellians, Lagrians, Diaparines, and Tenebrionines. And I have included some examples here at the bottom. Um, we heard about Bacronini yesterday in one of the presentations, but uh, this is part of the Nimi Platini. And then we have here the, um, this is a Carodini. And we have Hyosis, Hyosini, Diaparine. And then Pangea is possibly belongs to the Tenebrionines based on many sets of characters, but um, is in Certicidus at the moment. So there are some unplaced genera for sure. A second element based on Eric's um, scheme is the Austral Gondwanan element. And these um, are mostly mythic forests, Tenebrionids and they often occur in Chile, New Zealand, New Caledonia, and Australia. And we'll use these uh, acronyms here beside the different groups. The first one is Zolodinines, and this is the species that occurs in um, um, Tasmania in Australia. And there's also a, one genus in New Zealand, this small subfamily, but uh, more recently a, a Fossil was described from Burmese amber that looks like it would belong to this subfamily. So I'm not too sure about how this uh, applies in this um, scheme of, of different uh, formal elements, but uh, something to look at in more detail. Um, people have talked about Adelini, the carotid looking, ground dwelling Tenebrianas that are mostly in. Uh, Chile, including Chile, New Zealand, New Caledonia, and Australia. And this is one example here, the type genus Adelium. They do look like carabids, and these are the ones that have the uh, uh, long defense glands that come out of the back end when uh, they're trying to defend themselves. The Phrenopatines are apparently part of this element, and this is uh, one species of Archaeoglenes. And 
as I said, um, there are not a lot of Timidians in Australia, but what happened is that the, diver, uh, the uh, desertification of the continent came later and it was um, mostly covered by forests before it started to get more arid. And so what happened is that a lot of groups that were in forests moved into these arid areas and become, became really diverse. So you've got a unique uh, set of uh, genera that are uh, from different subfamilies that are occupying um, the arid areas in Australia, which is kind of different from anywhere else. And you've got these Heliines, the Piedish beetles. Helia is the type genus here. Hallorini, this is a member here. They have the rounded eyes usually and endemic to this um, area. And Titaneines, we heard about those as well. And these are in Australia and New Zealand. And Trachylostenini, this is a member here and uh, was treated by uh, John Lawrence and Eric Matthews more recently and there's uh, diversity in Chile as well, interestingly. And then the aliculines, which are mostly associated with the mesic forests, belong to this faunal element as well. And next we have the third faunal element, which is the northern element or northern invaders. And these would have come from um, the Endomalayan area in tropical forests that are mostly in northeastern Australia, northern Australia, and some groups that belong to uh, this sort of uh, faunal element includes Lagrians. We heard about the Cossuses, and there's one species in Australia, Goniaderines, Lagrini, Lupropini. As they were understood at the time, uh, we will have to check this with uh, the new breakdown of uh, tribes uh, in the Lagrians by Roth and colleagues. And then the Blattines, this is a Blattine here. And Toxicum is a really nice um, beetle that has uh, exaggerated structures. It's hard to see here, but the males often have these projections with tufts of setae at the end, and they fight, uh, the males fight. So this is a member of the Toxicini and Leo. Crinus is a member of the Leocrinini, which is a diaporine that looks like um, Chrysomelid, um, sorry, Coxinellas, that we heard about before. Triple Hornia was described recently, and uh, it is unplaced within the diap diaperinae, and it could become its own tribe, but more work is needed to uh, determine this. And Spinochiines are certainly members of tropical forest element, and this is a species of Apterotheca that I studied during my thesis. So I have included here some resources for uh, those who are interested in this uh, realm. And uh, Eric Matthews and myself uh, published a book on uh, at genus level with keys. So this was published in 2008. And there was a chapter and the um, Australian Beatles in the second volume that came out in 2019 by Matthews and Lawrence. And this is really nice as well and has a lot of uh, representatives of all of the genera uh, with photographs, nice photographs and dorsal view. Uh, Charles Watts published a paper on New Zealand, Cinebryonids. It's a little while back now, but um, it's available online uh, for free. So it's still free to uh, click and Look at this uh, when you have a chance. New Caledonia, the beetles were treated uh, by Sultan Kassab in a couple of publications. And then more recently, Soldati et al. published a nice paper on Eulomini to be uh, looked at for sure. That's a really nice paper. And a larger treatment of New Caledonian beetles will be published uh, you know, in the near future by the same group. And for New Guinea, you have a uh, large treatment by Gideon in 1921, and then some additional works by Kassab, and then more recently, again, by Soldati et al., a nice chapter in a book on um, the Tinebryonids of uh, Papua New Guinea. For the Indo-Malayan realm, there isn't really um, a treatment of the whole region as a whole, and so I don't have as much to say, and as this is not the fauna that I know uh, as well as uh, some other places, so it won't be as detailed 
of a description, but it belongs, uh, you know, uh, phonetically with groups that occur in equatorial Africa, Madagascar, the Indian subcontinent, southern China, Southeast Asia, New Guinea, Northern Australia, and the Pacific. And Stenokine and Tenebrionine, especially the Americ mines, are especially diverse in this realm. And uh, endemic higher groups include uh, Cassicini, Technocerini, we've heard about most of the Lenine, Lenini. And within the Pimili Ine, we've got the Nemipatini, one subtribe in particular, Tenebrionine, apparently the Alcitobini, Pallorini, Toxicini, Risopalcini are um, endemic higher groups in this realm. And you can see the other ones as well here. And Leocrinini, the ones that look like coccinellids, and Trachycellini as well. And I have given examples here. And Lecanum is uh, probably one that you would recognize because it's in the United States as well. It's more or less a uh, um, cosmopolitan beetle. And this is a really fancy one, Rodoniella with, uh, you can see the extensions on the head and the uh, anterior portion of the pronotum. This opposus is really interesting as well. And Trachycellus, uh, you know, they occur um, in sand usually in their diggers, so they have modified legs as we've heard before. And I wanted to show some diversity and um, in shapes and color and form and uh, we've seen a lot of black beetles in the presentation so far, but in the tropics, they really explode in diversity. And I took those particular photographs from Nikki Bay, and they include uh, Stenokini with projections here on the Elytra, Seropria, Petrophilus. Uh, both of these have these oil slick kind of uh, patterns on the Elytra. Strongylium is there and really diverse in this area. We've heard about this one before, Amerigmus, uh, you know, with the vertically uh, slanted head, and Therispia, which is a Leocrinini from Singapore. There are actually quite a few works or publications that came out on the different areas, and I've listed them here. And if you have uh, difficulty accessing some of them, Please let us know and we'll help out for Borneo, Taiwan, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, India, Nepal. But overall, this is a super diverse um, realm in terms of the Tenebriana diversity and a lot of more work needs to be done to describe the fauna. And uh, we need a lot more phylogenetic work as well because some of the genera are certainly not monophyletic and it would be nice to have a broader understanding of the subdivisions, like the uh, different echo regions within the realm and how the fauna uh, compares or, or is close to uh, the fauna of other realms. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. So I think that kind of finishes our, our super quick trip around uh, the world. Thanks everybody for presenting on that. Um, and so hopefully that just kind of helps show just some other cool stories and, and how what this family kind of starts to look like in a worldwide perspective, but also how we have seen a good deal of the diversity just here with uh, our focus on North America, um, which is kind of cool too, even though it's not the most diverse as far as number of genera um, in the, in the world. Uh, Kojin, you think about a eight minute break to the top of the hour and then we can come back and talk about immature stages of darkling beetles? Yep, sounds good. Great. I'm really excited to learn about larvae and pupae. <laughs>
Uh, Andrew, I think you're still recording. Maybe you should stop for now and then 